Hi there. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can categorize items in EasyOffice. And for that, we're going to look at the Groups module. We'll start off by talking about how you can go ahead and add items to a group, make a new group, and how does depreciation comes into play. So just to give you some overview, you can add to add a group, you need to go to the Groups listing page and click on the button on the top right. That allows you to add a group. So from over here, you can define the name, let's say, then you can have any add a description. If you need to calculate the depreciation of the assets within this group, you can basically select what kind of depreciation model you want to go for. Currently, the system supports two models. You can either go for percentage of depreciation or you can go for the useful life of assets. For now, let's just go ahead with the useful life of assets and create the group. Great, so we can see that the group has been created, but it doesn't have any assets associated to it. So as an example, let's go ahead and look at our IT assets group. So we get a view of a more populated screen. So on the group's detail page, you will first have the option of adding a subgroup over here. Subgroups are basically children groups, and there is really no limit on how many subgroups you can have. So if, for example, you're tracking IT assets, and then you have further subgroups for all of the brands your IT assets belong from, such as HP, Dell, Apple, you can always go ahead and further categorize the group into these three divisions as well. On the group's detail page, you will get an overview of all of the assets, asset stock, and consumable, in, uh, consumable inventory that is over here. Now. How do you associate an item to a group? Well, there are a couple of ways to do that. You can either do that by going into the items detail page and clicking on edit and changing the group. If for example, you're adding a new item, you can go ahead and then just specify what group the item belongs to. But if you want to skip that and just add an item to a specific group, just go into the groups detail page, go to the type of item you want to add and click on add asset. Once you click on add asset, you'll notice that the group field is automatically populated for you from the start. So now that we've talked about how you can basically associate assets to a group, let's also look at a couple of ways in which you can change the group for all of your items in mass. So for that, we're going to go over to the items listing page. I'll walk you through a couple of processes. So if you want to do a mass import, just go to the import assets. If you're adding these groups for the first time, just add new assets. Or if you just want to update the group for existing assets, click on this option, upload your CSV file, and have the, exist, have the new group name included in that file as a new column. You can also go ahead and select a couple of the items that you think you need. Go to the Actions button, click on Edit, and from over here, Change Group for Selected Items. The pop-up gives you an overlay of all of the items that you've selected, and then you can always go ahead and select which group you want to transfer these items to. You're also allowed to go ahead and filter based on these groups. So for example, if you go to the filters over here, search for the group, and just apply what, what group's items you want to see. Between filtering for a group and going to the group's listing pages, these are basically serving the same purpose, so we leave it to the customer to decide whichever way they want to take. So to conclude this video, let's look at how custom fields interact with groups. So custom fields can be made group specific. For example, if you're making a warranty time uh, custom field, you might want to just restrict it to your IT assets and not have it for other groups such as furnitures or disposable items. So over here, when you're making the custom field, just scroll down and you have this whole page for group associations. So from over here, just select the ones that you think you need. There we go. So from over here, you can either select all of the groups or if that's not the case, you can just go in and specify which one you want to associate the custom field to. I hope this video was helpful. Please go ahead and do take a part in the knowledge check that you'll see at the end of it.